the president says, okay, from today, because you are so, so this, so, so that, that, I want you to now have a place in the Asorok. You can be staying in Asorok, have a room there. A major prophet stay in the Asorok. And they make a room there. But the other person that don't understand the things of the spirit, that don't know about the glory of God, we desire to stay there in Asorok. Because before you wake up in the morning, everything is available for you. But Moses said, no, I don't need Asorok. I don't want to stay in Asorok. I don't want to stay in the White House. I don't want to stay in the presidential lodge. I don't need all of those things. All I need is that glory that is beyond all of these things. So, child of God, when you are being oppressed by the devil, you are feeling sickness, you are feeling this, you are feeling that, a lot of things are trying to threaten your faith. You should cast your mind back to what we are talking about. We are talking about the glory that filled the universe. We are talking about the glory of the Father, not of the moon, not of the sun, not of the stars, not of this earthly, not of the glory of mercy or the glory of, uh, of uh, Ronaldo or the glory of Romare, or the glory of whatever sport, uh, uh, celebrity, or the musicians, or whatever you know. It's not their glory we are talking about. We are talking about the glory of the Father, the creator of the whole universe, the immortality that chose mortal to be called his sons and daughters. So right there in the bush where Moses was busy taking care of what is called the sheep, Moses now had the encounter. Just as many of us, some of us were right there in the world. Some of us were idol worshippers. Some of us never knew God. Some of us were people that were wanderers. Some people got born again in the house of Halotin. Some people even got born again when they went away to rob people. I know people that also have seen a man that gave his life after he has robbed for many years. He gave his life to Christ. Many people have become different kind of things. And through that, Jesus met with them. Moses had an encounter. And saw the burning bush. The moment he saw the burning bush, he was trying to position himself to see that burning bush very well. And the voice came, Moses, Moses. Pull up thy sandal for where you are is a holy ground. Moses would have said, ah, I know about the magicians. I know about the astrologers. I know about the divination, the people, the enchanters, all the witchcraft that work with Pharaoh. I know about them. I know how, can, how they do their magic, all the things they normally do. But this one is quite different. This is another type of kind of magician I've never seen before. Because I know that when they are doing their magic right there in the house of Pharaoh, there are some certain things they cannot do. It's the more you look and the less you see. But this one is quite different because this is a unique thing I've ever encountered in my life. And they've all said, I have seen the afflictions of my people that are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry. And I have come to deliver them. I have come to deliver them and take them to the promised land because there is something that is more better than what they are passing through where they are. Many of you are right there in the house of fear suffering. Many of you are right there in the land of captivity. Captivity in times of sickness. Captivity in times of pains. Captivity in terms of frustration. So many things are depriving you the glory. But today, God is going to arise. And the glory will take over all of those things in the name of Jesus. All those things that never led the will of God to be done in your life. The glory is going to swallow them today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right there, Moses had this encounter. And he said, Moses... I want to send you back to Egypt. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. You know, some of the things you run away from are where God wants to really do something in your life. Moses ran away because he doesn't want Pharaoh and the people to vest and kill him. Because he has already committed. Because he was in the quest of trying to save the people of God. 
Somebody in the quest trying to save his own people now has committed offense that they want to now kill him. They were looking for him. But the glory that supersedes the glory of Pharaoh, the glory of the moon, the glory of the star, the glory of the sun, the glory of the superstars, the celebrities, or whatever you want to talk about, the glory that supersedes all of them was the glory that encountered Moses right there on the mountain. And of course, we all know the scripture, how the demonstration of power, what God showed to Moses to convince him. Moses tried to argue and God showed him a lot of things. And Moses said, thank you, I will go. And Moses went. Get into the house of Pharaoh. The same thing that he saw begin to appear. Pharaoh now came out and said, ah, what do you mean? He said, say what? Say you are here for what? He said, I am here because God said, let my people go. Let my people go and have their own country. There's a place God has prepared for them. Let them go and have their own nation. Let them go and be a people of their own everything. They should manage their lives, their technologies, their understanding, their wisdom. They want to use it and develop their place. Pharaoh said, who is that God that I should listen to him? What do you mean? Don't you know I am the word power? Don't you know that I have gold? Don't you know I have silver? Don't you know I have power? Don't you know I have army? Don't you know I have everything? I have the connection. I am the king of the whole world. <laughs> but he failed to understand Nadibye Warozo Manozoburu Dibye. Who can interpret that very proverb? Dibye Warozo Manozoburu Dibye. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What the proverb means is the native doctor who prepared Sham to save many people, to say good things that is happening. But one day, all those things he saying, he prepared, the same thing he entered into the trap and they killed him. Hey! Thank you very much. Papa, thank you very much. You from Newi. Uh, God bless you. You are, uh, you are a, a wise man. So, Dibia Warozo Manozo Buru Dibia. If I continue with proverb, we will not go. Eh? Eh? Because churches never know there is a water that is different. Eh? Mbe. Mbe. Churches never know there is a different water until the day it went to the why the house of elderly woman that now pick Mbe and pour hot water on the Mbe. So Pharaoh said, Who is this God that I should obey him? I cannot obey him. I don't have right. I don't, I, don't, I don't need to obey this God to let his people go. They must remain here to serve us, to remain one Egypt, one Egypt, one whatever they call it. And then Moses now remembered what he told him. Moses now remembered that he said, cast thy stick on the ground. And Moses casted his stick on the ground. The stick and the staff of Moses turned to what is called python, snake, serpent. On seeing the serpent, Pharaoh said, ah, what are you talking about? You want to show me power? You want to prove to me that you have more Power or magic or whatever. And Pharaoh said, Oh, yeah, all the astrologers, all the magicians, all the enchanters, all the divination, all the witchcraft, oh, yeah, come out. They all came out. He said, Look at what Pharaoh, uh, Moses has done. Maybe he learned it from one of you. Show him what is called snake. All of them started dropping their own. Their own started turning to snake. They begin to see different kind of snake, different python, viper, and all kind of snake different levels of their power and glory because when we are talking about glory we are talking about power we are talking about authority we are talking about the alpha and omega at the end of dropping their weapons and their snakes something happened somebody said something happened somebody said something happened that of moses opened his mouth 
and begin to swallow them one by one, swallow them one by one, swallow them one by one, and swallowed all their stars and never vomited anyone. That was where the eyes of Pharaoh now opened. He said, ah, what kind of power is this? When I think I have arrived, when I thought I have gotten to the highest level, so another power day that can swallow the power of my magicians, of my native doctors. How many? That was sign number one. Sign number two. Sign number three. Sign number four. Sign number five. Sign number six. To the end, and Pharaoh said, please, please, leave me. Go, 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 go. Well, now don't finish us. Go, go, go. That was how Moses now led the people out of the land of Egypt, straight to the way to promised land. 